In this presentation, we will discuss the comprehensive problem, goals of the comprehensive problem, and components of the comprehensive problem. We will be working the payroll problem in Excel. This is going to be the Excel worksheet. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We're going to have a few tabs that we will be jumping back and forth through. Not too much jumping. We're going to try to put as much on uh, an individual spreadsheet as possible, but there will be three tabs to the problem. We've got the register and uh, record. We got the GL tab and we've got the W2 and W3. These three here are going to be the answer tab. So we're going to go through just the answers, seeing this information all filled out. And then these three tabs are going to be where we can work the problem. So when we work the problem, we're going to be in these three tabs and we can always refer back to the answer key to see what has been input and how it's being input. The goal of this problem is to be comprehensive enough so that we can see multiple time periods that we will be going through. And we can also see um, the register as compared to the uh, earnings records for individuals. We can also see the journal entries. I'm gonna to go to the second tab, post the journal entries as we go, see how that would be posted to a general ledger and see how the general ledger can then be used to create the trial balance over here. And uh, so, and then we also want to see the end of the time period problems, uh, worksheets and information and tax reports, which include the W-2 and the W-3. This is going to be a kind of a worksheet within Excel so that we can use formulas to um, see this information for the W-2 and the W-3. We'll also show the documents from irs.gov, the actual documents, and we'll fill out the 941s with this information. These are going to be the quarterly documents and the 941B, which is gonna be our, our deposits. And then uh, the 941 for a second quarter, we're gonna be doing the last two quarters in a year with the assumption that we are starting a new company in the middle of the third quarter. And then we'll be entering the data and then we'll have two quarters of the year to record uh, the 941s, a quarterly report and the related schedule Bs. And then the year end 940, it's going to be the 940 form in the year end and then we'll have to show the w2s and the w3 now because the w2 and w3 do not allow us to have a data input in the system that's why in excel which worked out well because it actually is nice to use formulas we have the w2 and the w3 here in excel just like a, a mock data input form so we can see how this gets put together so that's going to be a lot of jumping, of course, because we're going to try to go through an entire year of payroll because really we can get uh, into any component of payroll in order to do that, in order to jump through the entire year and be able to tie out what happens on an individual pay period to the quarterlies, to the quarterly reports, to the year end summary reports and the creation of the W-2 and the W-3 and the 940. Um, we're going to we're going to try not to get too complex so that we can have the ability to not get too bogged down in, in individual pay periods. Therefore, we've chosen to have uh, monthly pay periods rather than bi-weekly or, or semi-monthly or weekly, which is probably not the most common type of pay period, but it will allow us to enter less data for a month and a half's worth, uh, a quarter and a half to one and a half quarters or two quarters worth of information without having too much uh, detail in there <laughs> so that we can see the big picture and see how everything ties together. So we'll enter data into the payroll register and we'll do that on a monthly basis. So each month we'll enter the data into the payroll register for our employees. We're going to have four of them. And we're also going to enter the data into the uh, earnings record over here. And this is going to be the record for each individual employee and this will show us not only what happened for that employee during a particular pay period, 
but the sum up to a particular date. So we're going to be going through August, September, October, and November. New company starting in August. And uh, so we can see the data for the all the um, all the data for any individual employee. We'll also take the information, I'm going to scroll back to the left, from the payroll register to create the journal entries. So we'll then go to the second tab. I'm going to the second tab over here. And we're going to enter this information into the journal entries. Now, the journal entries are one from an accounting standpoint. They're one of the most complex type of journal entries we have. You can see the journal entry is quite long to enter this data into the journal entry. And we basically need two of them to record any payroll. And that doesn't matter if we do the payroll in-house or if we do it uh, with a third party that completes the payroll. We still need to record it into our system and be able to understand what's happening in the system, whether we use an automated system or a manual system, whether we use a third party to do the payroll or not. So we, we've got to understand from an accounting standpoint, this payroll journal entry.